see Nigeria? How are they going to see Nigeria? I think it's a, a, a very important thing that we must have in sober reflection. We must see ourselves as one. God's values we know for, we know just, known for is no longer there. October 1st of every year is always a celebration period for everybody, even the little kids. But today those things are no longer there because of hatred, because of divisive words. I, I want to appreciate, in this student, I've always appreciated the uh, Senator Nahala because he was always saying that we must think about that thing that will unite Nigeria than those things that will divide us. This is a time all the big other countries in the world look up to Nigeria as the leader of Africa. But Mr. President, you'll agree with me today, all the little, little countries in this African continent are even being regarded more by the international community than Nigeria. So I think it's important we must go into a sort of reflection and come back to where we are. Because if you, uh, if you are a Christian, when you have seen that you have seen a lot, you go for atonement. So Nigeria needs to go for atonement and go back where we started from. But that is the only way we can come together. And this is the only way the superpowers will see Nigeria as the leader of Africa. I want to appreciate Nigeria. I want to wish all Nigerians, including myself, well in this 57th birthday. But it is important. We must, because if you don't know where you started, you will know where you are going to. It is very important we come together as Nigeria, as one, and be together. Like the way we operate here in the Senate, at this chamber, Mr. President, it's like we're from one family. But outside this place, we are, we are different people. So I want what we, what we exhibit here in this Senate, try to also replicate it outside when we go outside and meet other people. Nigeria is one, I want to continue to be one. Thank you, Mr. President, and God bless you. Deputy Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and my distinguished colleagues. We live in a country that is unique. Unique in its size, unique in its combination, unique in its contents by way of human beings. It has been said that we have over 250 different ethnic nationalities in this country. Now, the opportunity we have at pre-independence is that our leaders have consistently recognized the fact that this country called Nigeria is a unique country and therefore a unique approach to ensure its survival as a nation should be followed at every stage when governance is to be offered to this country. And that's why you will see that the framers of our constitution have been very, very careful and diligent in doing the same thing. I think this is the time that I feel is important to remind our leaders, more especially the SNX, that when, in their wisdom, they decided to bring to fruition the 1999 Constitution, which is the basis upon which the framework of governance in this country is being built today, they did say that every elected individual must subscribe to an oath of office and oath of allegiance. And in that oath of office and the oath of allegiance, they were so specific about certain issues. One, that the basis of engagement between the Nigerian citizens and the elected officials is that they will uphold, protect, and defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the law. And that they will do justice to all manner of people without fear or favor, affection or ingredient. So one begins to ask, Having subscribed to the order of office, having subscribed to the order of allegiance, where lies the wisdom of going to bring issues that are completely outside the contents of the constitution? And I think that this is where we must be extremely careful. For us to go outside the contents of the constitution to begin to discuss issues that were neither anticipated by the, by the framers of our constitution, 
or the constitution itself, I think is a very, very big violence to the oath of office that we are taking and to the rules of engagement that they And I begin to ask again, the reason why we must equally be more careful as leaders, if today one facts or some people who believe erroneously that they are greater than the 170 million Nigerians sit somewhere to do press conference and say this is how a country should be governed, we ask where are they lies their mandate. And then the next question is, if you say because of their status in the society, you are conceding to the nature from the order of office you are taking, then if tomorrow another group with the same kind caliber decide to say this is what they want, where are we going to stop? So in, the, in our reflection as we celebrate our independence, I think it is very, very important for our leaders to be extremely careful, extremely careful in popping out matters for the purpose of scoring political goals and doing a very, very serious damage to the thinking, the wishes, and aspirations of those who fought for the independence of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let that day not come that a section of the elected officials in this country will be held responsible for reneging and putting the country in trouble simply because you want to pursue one or two political goals. May that day not come in this country. Thank you, sir. Just two more. I think Senator Ijoku and then the Thank you, Your Excellency, the President of the Senate, my highly respected colleagues. Mr. President, I this morning join my colleagues in congratulating Nigeria in advance for the independence. Mr. President, like earlier speakers, Nigeria has come a long way after independence. Nigeria has achieved quite a lot in terms of development since the independence. But Mr. President, a lot needs to be done. Mr. President, this country has a generation of other countries that had independence about the same period. Mr. President, if you put us side by side with some of these countries, Mr. President, you'll find out that these countries have gone far ahead of Nigeria. I give example of Malaysia, Mr. President. We had independence about the same time. Malaysia, at that time, Nigeria was even best off. And um, Malaysia, with Nigeria started, Malaysia came to Nigeria to take palm seeds, to do palm, palm oil. Today, Malaysia is a world, world leader in palm production. But Nigeria, along the line, has just left this sector, they left this docile, and nothing, our priorities were shifted to other things. Mr. President, we can take examples of so many countries like Pakistan and so on, that we all are a generation of countries that were given independence by our colonial masters. Though there's no denying the fact that Nigeria is united, we are together, Mr. President, but I believe that leaders, as leaders, we have to redirect our agenda, we have to be more focused and to try and live up to the standard of countries that we are if we had independence at the same time. Mr. President, a lot, there's a lot of mileage that needs to be covered. So I, while I congratulate Nigeria for this independence, I urge our leaders to look at the situation and see the need for further improvement so that we can catch up with other countries that we are at par with in terms of age of independence. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Booker. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, uh, let me begin by thanking the Deputy Senate President for bringing up this issue. I know ordinarily we wouldn't have forgotten about the birthday of Nigeria, but on the other hand, we wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to tell ourselves 
How grateful we are to the Almighty God. Sir, on that same day, first October, I, Senator Bukhara, C.O.N. will also be 68. I'll be 68 years old. So I'm much older than Nigeria and much older than Senator Lidani. So Senator Lidani is still a small boy. So is Nigeria. And I believe there are some few who might be older than me. But let me use this God-given free uh, opportunity to blow my trumpet, trumpet at the age of 68 with all the achievements which need not be stated, but I will for the sake of those who are not aware of who Senator Bukhara by Brahmins. I was born 68 years ago, come 1st October. I went through a nursery school, a primary school, a secondary school, a higher school certificate, university, master's degree, and I became a commissioner, a governor, and now at the age of 68, a senator. So I am very proud. I am very proud of Nigeria and its achievements. I am proud of myself and also my achievements. And uh, I, somebody said, if you don't blow your trumpet, nobody will. And today, I think it's a God-given opportunity for me to blow my trumpet. And I am extremely happy about Nigeria and very, very happy about myself. And let me categorically say, Mr. President, that I am going to stay in this Senate until death. Do part us. I'm a, everybody tells me I'm a senator in, for life. I am going to be a senator for life. Because there is no other way I can go, continue to contribute. Leader and Senator Hassan, I hope you are listening. Minority Leader. Uh, Mr. President, my respected colleagues, I rise to add my voice to the speeches of my colleagues in congratulating Nigeria and all Nigerians on this uh, epoch-making event of attaining 57 years of statehood. I must say, that it has not been an easy journey in the last 57 years. So to all Nigerians, congratulations for our dear independence at 57. To our colleagues, particularly those like uh, Senator Lidani, Senator Lidani and uh, okay. Senator O, oh, who was born first of Senator Abu Bakr and others who were born on the first day of October, I also congratulate them on their birthday, which coincides with that of Nigeria. Mr. President, it hasn't been an easy journey in the last 57 years. And whilst we congratulate ourselves for staying together as a nation, we must remember our heroes that died in the course of keeping this nation together. May their souls rest in perfect peace. Particularly those that died during the Nigerian Civil War, between 1967 and 1970. My prayer is that never again should Nigeria see another civil war because it's very difficult for any nation to survive two civil wars. And then I do know that as leaders we have a lot of responsibilities uh, to ensure that Nigeria continues uh, to grow in leaps and bounds and that we celebrate more decades of bad days in future together as a nation. And one of those things we must do is to ensure justice, justice to all and justice for all. We must try as leaders to take cognizance of the things we did in the past, which tended to become retrogressive. Because at the time, Nigeria was like a nation that moved one step forward and two steps backward. And at the time, Nigeria was almost regarded by others as a nation with so much motion but no movement. But today, looking back, we can say the last 57 years that we have made a lot of progress. And one of the uh, major things that we will see is the institution of democracy. So I want to congratulate all of us in these chambers and all politicians across Nigeria, particularly the family of the PDP that sustained democracy for over 16 years in Nigeria. And I think continuing to do everything possible to support 
this country to ensure democratization continues. Uh, democracy is all about freedom, and uh, we wish that this will continue so that Nigerians will continue to express themselves and continue to have the freedom to associate with one another and the freedom to speak out their minds without let or hindrance. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, I do know that it has not been an easy journey, very checkered history. And our prayer is that learning from the past, we must not allow ourselves as leaders to attempt to press any section down. Because it is the feeling of marginalization that sometimes leads to agitation, either for independence or for restructuring. And we do know that the current trend is the feeling of restructuring. But I know that restructuring does not mean dismemberment of Nigeria. It does not mean that we are going to separate from one another. It means that we must uh, reject the internal mechanisms of the, of the workings of government and, of course, the ways and manner we do things in Nigeria. And we want to, from my side, assure you, Mr. President, that if this Red Chamber should want to look into the issue of restructuring with the intention of corporate Nigeria as an entity, that we will support the issue of restructuring, which that for me means internal rejecting of the system to ensure that it functions much better and to ensure that justice prevails. Congratulations to all Nigerians. Congratulations to Mr. President on this determined independence anniversary. And our prayer is that Nigeria will not see tragedy. Our prayer is that Nigeria will not see hurricane. Our prayer is that mandate should not be apportioned. Our prayer is that insurgency in any part of the country should come to an end. Our prayer mostly is that we will all turn to God because God is... The Senate do congratulate Nigeria and all Nigerians on the 57th independence celebration and call for unity of the country and for the, and for the good of the citizens and development of the country. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. I thank you all for the you continue all wish all Nigerians a uh, happy Independence Day in advance as we celebrate our 57th Independence Day. Um, we are all proud of the country that we have and as people continue to question whether there is something to celebrate, I think we must rightly say yes there is, that it is a work in progress, it is a case of a cup half full and half empty, that the future is still bright and must continue the suit for peace, unity, despite the challenges that the country is going through. And we are very confident that we will continue to build a greater country. Thank you. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, point of order, Mr. President. Mr. President, I come under orders 52 and 53-6. Right. Keep the 36 first. It shall be out of order to attempt to consider any specific question upon which the Senate has come to a conclusion during the current session except on a substantive, substantive motion for decision. 52 reads. Notice shall not be dispensed with in the case of a motion or in respect of any other proceeding for which notice is required except with the consent of the President of the Senate and the general assent of the Senators present. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, yesterday the Senate resolved to invite the Ministers of Finance and national planning and budget to appear on Tuesday next week to brief the Senate on the implementation of the 2017 Appropriation Act. This was consequent upon the consideration of the motion moved by the Sungu Senator Benga Shafa. Mr. President, 
many senators here feel that perhaps that will not give us the opportunity to get the kind of details that we need to have for us to take any meaningful decision. Many senators feel that even the presenters, those who will appear, the ministers, may not give that kind, the kind of details that we may need in plenary. And therefore, the feeling and the view is that instead of the ministers to appear in plenary here, we refer them to the Joint Committee on Finance and Appropriation where the questions may be deeper and broader and where submissions must be made in a such a manner that will satisfy the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I want to appeal to this Senate that we do that so that eventually the Joint Committee will report to us in plenary for us, for us to receive the submissions by the ministers. I so move, Mr. President. The same colleague uh, leader has come on the um, 53, 6 and 52. First, according to our rules, let me first put the question yourself. My concern by any general concern of the senators to at least to first entertain this motion. Those in favor that this be entertained say aye. Those against say nay. Yeah, it's happening. Then his next question, the next question I put forward is actual, is actual what he has asked for, which is that um, these the ministers, the ministers should appear before um, finance and uh, uh, corporation. And I think this is the view of a lot of our colleagues that it will be a more detailed uh, environment that uh, in plenary, and then after that we can decide whether there's still need for them to come here or not. So again, those in favor of that uh, say aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. So the ministers of finance and uh, appropriation will appear before a joint sitting of finance and, uh, and uh, appropriation and on Tuesday at the same time. And um, the clerk, please ensure that it is given adequate um, um, coverage so that the, the public will have the opportunity also to follow the process. Thank you. the Senate. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, the first order of the day is the presentation and consideration of the report of the Committee on Trade and Investment on the Counterfeit Goods Prohibition Bill 2017. The single senators will report that the report of the committee was laid on Thursday, 27th July 2017. Mr. President, you may wish to invite Senator Fatima Maraji Asaki, Chairman of the Committee, to move the motion for the presentation and consideration of the report. Senator Raju Azaki. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, my name is Senator Fatima Raju Asaki, representing the Central Senatorial District. I rise to move that the Senate will consider report of the Committee on Trade and Investment on the Counterfeit Group in 2017, SB1 and Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. I am Senator Ali Sabi Abdullahi Major Lot. I rise to second the motion that the Senate do consider the report of the Committee on Trade and Investment in the Counterfeit Goods Bill 2017. I so second. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor that the Senate consider the report of the Committee on Trade and Investment on Counterfeit Goods Bill 2017, SB 117. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. Senator Raju has that.
for a lot to introduce measures against the trade in counterfeit goods so as to further protect owners of trademarks and copyright against the unlawful application to goods of, of the subject matter of their respective intellectual property rights and the release of goods of that nature into the channels of commerce and coordinated matters counterfeit goods. 2017 bill. Mr. President, you may recall that this bill was introduced and the first reading was taken on 28 October 2015. The bill was read the second time on the 16th of March 2016 and referred to the Senate Committee on Trade and Investment for further legislative action. This important bill was sponsored by Senator Issa Nisau, Bauchi Central. The bill went past with her in the ease of being business in Nigeria, which we enhanced economic growth. The bill has 25 clauses only. The committee adopted the following methodology in the course of its attorney. Received memoranda from members of the public, National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAPA, Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Civil Society Organization, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, and other relevant stakeholders. We also conducted a public hearing, which was well attended by the relevant stakeholders on the 13th December 2016. We also considered the bill clause by clause during his meeting, and uh, there was uh, contributions by the single senators at the second meeting of the bill, and the committee engaged the service of a consultant during the work of the bill. The objective of the bill, uh, the counterfeit goods bill, seek to introduce measures aimed at checking trade in counterfeit goods so as to further protect owners of trademarks, copyrights, and certain marks under the patent act. The bill also prohibits certain acts in relation to counterfeit goods, as well as the possession of counterfeit goods in certain circumstances. It also creates and prescribes penalties in the relation to counterfeit. This bill further seeks to introduce measures to further protect owners of trademark against counterfeit of their goods, protect consumers from dangerous counterfeit goods, and ensure that the profit revenue accrues to government from trademark owners of goods. Nigeria has become a major destination of counterfeit and pirated goods. According to reports, products often counterfeit and pirated includes currency, Apparel, consumer, electronics, automotive parts, pharmaceutical, food and drinks, and chemicals. Whereas the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration was set up to check the potential danger posed by counterfeit food, drinks, and pharmaceuticals, while other products are left unprotected. Counterfeit foods are authorized are unauthorized or illegally manufactured, reproduced, altered, or distributed goods. It is also associated with abuse of recognized intellectual property rights, such as trademark, patents, design, or copyright in goods. Counterfeit goods are on the increase globally. It is reported that the largest supply of counterfeit goods in Africa is China, Korea, and Taiwan. Nigeria has not only become a major consumer of cheap counterfeit goods, but also has become both a target destination and significant transit route to other West African countries. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the committee led by the senior senator Fatima Rasaki. That's my turn. We'd like to use this video to thank the Senate for giving the members the opportunity to serve.
Thank you. I so present. Any comments? We are doing a clean move. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, I move that the Senate resolves into Committee of the Board to consider the report. Mr. President, the Senate will arise the second the motion that the Senate will resolve into Committee of the Board to consider the report. I so second. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the resolved Committee of the Board consider the report say aye. Those against say nay. That is that. Distinguished colleagues, we have three of these to do, so let us make progress. There are 25 clauses. The first clause starts on page 7. Clause 1 on page 7. Page seven, page eight. Those in favor of clause one stands part of this. Say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Clause two. Those in favor of. We are now on page ten. Yes, and to Three, those in favor that clause three sounds part of this AI. Those against say nay, the eyes have it. Clause four on page thirteen. Mr. Savi. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm looking at the concluding part of clause four, where it is saying, and if necessary, by force, whenever found, including on any public road or any other public place. Meanwhile, if you look at uh, Rather than just living by force, 
just like that. So I thought we should, I don't know if maybe the committee has a better argument too. Senator Raju Azaki, you want to comment on that? Deputy Leader. Thank you very much, sir. Sorry to take you back, sir. This clause three. Mr. Fabio, follow me. Mr. Fabio, follow me in determining clause three, sir. Sir, in criminal law, there is a difference between breach and committal of an offense. When you talk about breach, then you can talk of being or likely to be or whatever. But when you talk of commission of an offense, it's solely determined by ingredients. And that's why under the law, uh, in incoherent offenses, we find different. Because the question will always arise, at what stage can an offense be said to have been committed? And the answer will definitely be, you cannot determine. And that's why we don't treat incoherent offenses under our laws. And it's more specifically under Section 51B, if my memory has not failed me, uh, uh, of the penal code. So we have to grab this to state the ingredients of the offense and leave it at that. But to say that we are the man who never suspect that. I'm you can talk about that one, sir. You no, know, uh, you have not finished it later. You must either make uh, your, your which 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 part of three are you talking about now? Three one says where a complaint has been laid with an inspector or on the strength of any other information at his or her disposal, the inspector has reasonable grounds to suspect that an offence under clause two two of this bill has been or
Assuming already they've gotten warrant, an inspector who is a police officer or who is assisted by a police officer may stop the vehicle if necessary by force. Now, a police officer is known, of course, you have defined it, but when you amend it now to say, and if such, I mean, if necessary by force, wherever found, including on any public group or at any other public group, the point I'm saying is. Leaving the use of force without properly defining it can be subject to some abuse and you may rather have a counter effect rather than what you want to achieve. So my thought is that we should be very clear on this so that it's not left, you know, just like hanging. That's my own Clause 5. Those in favor of clause 5 stands part of the bill say aye. aye. Those against say nay. Yes, I will. Clause 6. Six on page twenty two. Clause six. So it's a very that clause six stands part of the CI. Those against say nay, there is a clause 7 on page 26. Yep. Sorry to take us back. Um, page 23, under the same clause uh, 6D, uh, it is saying where the inspector has gone into a prom, uh, premises is given various provisions there. Uh, the one on uh, that is number item D, he said as soon as possible remove the goods if transportable to a counterfeit goods depot for safe storage or if not capable of being removed or transported, declare the goods to have been seized and seal off or seal and lock up those goods or place them under guard at the place where they were found, and there upon that place will be deemed to be a counterfeit goods depot. Now, my my worry and concern here is that this has been the current practice, and the implication has been that some people go back to that same depot and do some underhand practices, and you find these same counterfeit goods being taken out through other means to the same market. So I think we should make a provision that we allow those in charge of this responsibility to destroy 
Because the destruction, until you destroy these counterfeit goods, the chances of them reappearing within the same market is very high. And I think this is the present situation we, we, you know, that is actually happening. They seize these things. These people don't have the wherewithal to actually keep these things, guard them in the depot. And at the end of the day, you see some people siphoning them out. So I would like to, if this is uh, understood, to see how we can make a provision that says maybe within some reasonable time, when they must have confirmed everything they need to confirm, that truly this is a counterfeit good, they should destroy it. Because I've not seen that kind of provision. Josabi, at this point we're dealing close by close. You must come up with specific uh, recommendations. It's not uh, it's not a time for debate. Uh, so, so if you have an issue, then you must come up with something that you are recommending, and I'll put the question and and just to for us to get up and for us to hear your voice to debate. It's really, it's not uh, we are past that. Sense. So, if you have a specific area, of, you make a recommendation on what amendment. All right, so so I go back to um, I think we're on clause seven, isn't it? Clause seven. Those in favor that clause seven stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay. As I close eight. Clause eight on page twenty-eight goes on to thirty-one. Yes, the leader. The prescription of the prescription of three days is too harsh for the enforcement act because it depends on the kind of the counterfeit that you are talking about. Certain investigation needs to be carried to ascertain, and they may not be able to do it within three days. So, if you now prescribe that it must be done within three days, I think it's unreasonable. So I think we, we take it seven days or within 14 days. Let's put 14 days back. 14 put, days. Put, yeah. Central Gobri. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I actually second the motion that it should be within 14 days. Thank you. The English colleagues, those in favor that clause eight one as a, as amended, so that I should, should read now, not later than 14 days, should stand as part of the bill. Say aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Clause 8.2 to 8.3. All right, A2 as well, and just A2. Yes, just A2. Those in favor that A2 too should be amended, say aye. Those against say nay, yes, A3. In favor that eight three stands, but people say aye. Those against say nay. Eight four. Eight four. Eight five. Those in favor, if an eight five stands part of the bill, say aye. Those again say nay. The yeah, eyes have it. Clause nine. Nine on page thirty one. Nine. 
9.1. Again, 9.1 says, without derogating from the powers. I don't understand that drafting. I think better to say without prejudice. Mr. President, this is which colleagues I just write to second the submission and suggest them by Senator Nama. Thank you. The Supreme Court put the question. Those in favor that was 9 1 as amended sounds part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay. There is a bill. Something. Where you said without derogating from the powers, or without prejudice of the powers of the court, not from the powers of the court. No, you said from. Senator Kubi, are satisfied? Clause 9 2. Those in favor that clause 9 2 stands part of the say aye. Those against say nay. Clause 10. Clause 10. On page 33. Those in favor that clause 10, sounds part of the say Those against say nay, the eyes have Clause 11, on page 37. Thank you, leader. Can you approach us? Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, I, I hold an opinion that this report, we might have to turn down this report at this stage in order to do a motor job. It appears that uh, there was some sort of hurry in the draft and the uh, this cannot be the product of uh, the product of the uh, institution, and I believe that we can send this to the legal department to have a look at it. Because if you look throughout, I've been trying to see how I can save the situation, but it appears that the more I try, the more I get into trouble. I, I, 
I, I respectfully suggest that we stand down the frustration with the board and the party the legal department to see what we can do about this situation. My colleagues will accept this prayer. Yes, Senator uh, Adlaya. Mr. Chairman, I rise to second the position adduced by the deputy leader. So I've been trying actually to see whether I can make sense you know, of the good law of this estate, legally drafted document. And uh, I think sending this bill as this, you know, is going to really be the opposite of whether we are serious you know, regarding some of the issues that are uh, coming. So I think to go back to the bigger draft department, we we'll look at it de novo, and then see whether they can harmonize both the language and the rendition you know, of the section that are presented. I saw the answer. Yeah, distinguished colleagues, I think that um, clearly there are some issues here that border on the legal um, drafting of this document, and I think the subject matter is very technical as it goes to do with counterfeit goods and as such we have to be and I think also the fact that some of these errors had been already been done in the in the previous law and I think that does not mean we should allow it to continue. So I think that um, I'll put the question those in favor that we do send it the legal department look into it and then represent it for another those in favor say aye. Those against say nay yes, I mean, so clap, let this go to the legal department and let them and I think also going forward, a lot of these uh, bills uh, have to do with a lot of technical issues. Must go first to legal department just to ensure that um, all those areas has been explained before they come here for final consideration. Just, just take note of that as a as a decision of the chamber. Thank you. Leader of the Senate, Mr. Chairman, very distinguished colleagues, I move that the Senate revert to plenary for the charge of what progress. Mr. Chairman, this mission of the rise to second the motion that the Senate do revert to plenary to report progress. I so second. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the motion that would revert back to plenary to report progress, say aye. Those against, say nay. The ayes have it. Senate in the committee of the whole consider the report of the Committee on Trade and Investment on Counterfeit Goods Bill 2017 and the report that it should be stood down and referred to the legal directorate for proper drafting of the bill and presented on another legislative day. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Whole? Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues. The second order of the day is the presentation and consideration of the report of the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters on the Abduction, Wrongful Restraint and Wrongful Confinement for Ransom Bill 2017. Simple Senators will recall that the report of the Committee was made on Wednesday, 26 July 2017. Mr. President, you may wish to invite Senator David Umaru, Chairman of the Committee, to the motion for the presentation and consideration of the report. Uh, Senator David Umaru is not here, but uh, Senator Tuku Kawatazi will do in his place. Senator Tazi. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Senator Tuku Kawatazi. I will present the good people of Enugu North and Fabulous State of Enugu State. I rise to move that this, chamber, this Senate accept the committee report on judiciary, human rights, and legal matters, report on a bill and act to provide for the punishment of uh, the offenses of abduction, wrongful restraint, or wrongful confinement for ransom and for related offenses. I so move. Senator Jibrin, Mr. President, I am Maro Jibrin. I present kind of note. I start to second the motion. It will be moved by Senator Otazi. So, second. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor that the Senate do receive the report 
of the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters on Adoption, wrong, Wrongful Restraints and Wrongful Confinement for Ransom Bill 2017, SB 118. Those in favor that we consider this report say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Senator Otazi, present the report, please. The report of the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters on a bill for an act to provide for the punishment of abduction, wrongful restraint, and wrongful confinement for ransom and for related offenses. Background. The abduction, wrongful restraint, and wrongful confinement for ransom bill 2016 SB 118 was sponsored by Senator Issa Misar, Bauchi Central, Central District. The bill was read for the first time on Tuesday, 17th May 2016, at the plenary of the Senate on Wednesday, at the plenary of, uh, of, of the sitting of the Senate on Wednesday, 5th October 2016. The Senate deliberated on the general principles of the bill. After extensive deliberations on the merits of the bill by distinguished senators, it was read for the second time and referred to the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters for further legislative action. I'll go to the objective of the bill. The bill, in our view, seeks to, among other things, prescribe state punishment for the offense of abduction wrongful restraint and wrongful confinement for ransom, prescribed penalties for conspiracy and death, serious injuries arising from commission of the offense. On the whole, it seeks to combat and prevent any form of kidnapping in Nigeria, and wider powers be given to the Inspector General of Police to ensure adequate policing of the crime. Uh, with the consent of the Senate, I have to go to the I have to go to the, the findings. Observations and findings. That's page nine. Flowing from the submissions, presentations made by the stakeholders and the general public on this proposed legislation, and having analyzed same in our subsequent markup sections, we hereby make the following observations through findings. One, that all the presentations made at the public hearing supported the passage of this bill. Two, that due to the economic hardship the country is currently facing, the spate of abduction, wrongful restraint, and wrongful confinement for ransom has reached an alarming proportion. And as a responsive legislature, it is incumbent on the Senate to enact laws to check this ugly and embarrassing menace of kidnapping for ransom in Nigeria. Three, that it is within the legislative competence of the National Assembly to pass this bill into law, and it can be enforced not only in the Federal Capital Territory, but in all states of the Federation by virtue of Section 4 of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. Four, that the bill seeks to reinforce some provisions of our extant statutes on the subject matter, which are not adequate enough to address the menace of kidnapping especially kidnapping for ransom recommendations. Arising from the premise and standpoint of presentations made by stakeholders and flowing from our observations to findings, the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, to which the bill was referred, referred to having favorably considered same and comment as follows, that the Senate do consider the bill, what, uh, do, do consider and pass the bill for an act to provide for the punishment of offenses of abduction, wrongful restraint, and wrongful confinement for ransom and for related matters as amended. I so move. Finally, we wish to use this opportunity to thank the President of the Senate and our distinguished colleagues for the opportunity to serve in this capacity and to respectfully commend the passage of this bill to the Senate. Thank you so much. Any comments, if not? We'll go straight to the leader of the Senate. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, I move that the Senate will not come to the board. Consider the report. Mr. President, the Senate colleagues, I rise to second the motion that the Senate will resolve with the Committee of the board to consider the report. I so support. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor that we resolve to come to the whole and consider the report say aye. Those against say nay. Yes, I
All right, the same should like there are 13 clauses. Clause 1 on page 2. Here's one for first, sir, is to say that I'm a member of this committee, but it appears that it's like a alteration of what we appear to have agreed upon because clause one four says Whoso, whoever conspires, aids, or abets to commit the offense in this section, that it should be whoever conspires, aids, or abets the commission of any offense in this section is guilty of an offense and shall be on li shall, shall, shall be liable on conviction to that. That's how to deal with the person. Sir? If you see section 4, sir, so section 4 says, whosoever commits, aids, or abets to commit, it should be whosoever conspires, aids, or abets the commission of any offense in this section is guilty of an offense and shall be liable on conviction to that. The chairman of the of Central Tazi is acting for the chairman. Any amendment then? Those in favor that clause one four as a many stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay, the eyes are both. Clause two. Yes, and uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's been continued though we have passed that stage. Just the, the the second part of it or shall be liable to conviction death sentence where the offense results in the death of the victim. I don't think it should only be the victim. Because I'm, I'm saying, I don't think it should be the victim alone. Because sometimes you have collateral debt. You have to collateral debt in the, even in the attempt to kidnap. Uh, for instance, they may want to kidnap the owner of the car, in the process they kill the driver. So where the, the, the argument that where a death sentence, where the offense uh, of the kidnapping will result in the death of the victim or any other person. Okay, the same colleagues, those in favor of that clause four, clause one, four, two, as amended, stands part of the bill, say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Clause two, listen, Deputy Leader. Again, sir, I have said it, sir. There are enormous literature on the fact that knowledge has never been an ingredient of our offense in any criminal jurisdiction, sir. Because it has been argued forcefully that where you make knowledge as an, as an ingredient, by the mere expedient of the person saying, I don't know, it ends the matter. So that is why the word intention is used, because intention has been clearly defined by our criminal jurisprudence to say that a man intends the natural and probable consequence of the act. So I will hold that we substitute knowingly with intentional design. Second, distinguished colleagues, those in favor that clause two as amended, or stand to Jibber. Baron Jibber, Colonel Lord. Sir, clause two says, whoever knowingly and unlawfully receives or has possession of property or disposes of any money or property in any proceed thereof, which has, has any time been delivered as ransom in connection with any offense punishable under session. I'm like, you know, you're saying 30 years, 30 years imprisonment. What I'm thinking here, sir, there could be someone who could be a sponsor of these acts. He might be somewhere and then send his boys to go and commit this offense. And after that offense has been committed, they will bring the ransom to him. And now you are saying once he gets the money, he's going to have a dependent is going to be 30 years. What are those who went to do his job, to do, to do what he really organize and get go them what to do that act will spend life in I mean we have life in prison. So I think 
anybody who gets anything to do with uh, 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 out of uh, 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 the kidnapping, get ransom, or if you have the same, or maybe a penalty, you have to go for life imprisonment. Because somebody could be there, organize, get people involved, all right, remains there, they bring the ransom to him, and you say, oh, I didn't take part. And you're allowed to go for 30 years. Whereas those who he sent to go and commit that offense will have life imprisonment. So it doesn't make sense, sir. He should, should also have life imprisonment. Deputy Leader. The argument of Baromi appears uh, valid on the face of it, but legally uh, is uh, deficient in the sense that the gist of the offense of conspiracy does not lay in the doing of the act or affecting the purpose for which the conspiracy is formed. So, conspiracy in itself is an offense, and there is already provision that goes to this. So, that is the provision. I, I, I can... St. John Kui. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, Mr. Chairman. I have a little worry, even though the deputy leader tried to give an explanation. But my fear and my worry is that while the original drafting which has been now presented read whoever knowingly, yes, I'm aware it has been changed, but I now so knowing and deposit on you monies that are proceeds which you are ignorant of. Probably that is why the original drafting is indicating knowingly. I'm not very sure, but I'm raising it because here it is indicating and read clearly that whoever is in possession, you understand, and there, is, there lies my own worry, my own fear that unknowingly somebody may be in possession of such goods or monies which he does not know originates from the result of a, a, a confinement or ransom demand. Deputy Leader, yeah. It's clear that for the civil senator Hukri, the only reason why we change it to intentionally, I have, to, I have said earlier, that conspiracy in itself is an offense. And don't forget that the standard of proof in criminal matters is that it must be beyond reasonable doubt. So when you leave a judge contigating between the fact that whether the C know, the C not know, when you see knowingly or not, you have already taken away that ingredient. So the, what has been clearly defined by law is intention. And the law says, a man intends the natural and probable consequence of his act. And, and, and there are a lot of authorities that are definitely nobody about this position, sir. Deputy Weep. I want to state that there is no drafting that is 100% uh, correct. There must be some uh, anomalies here and there. For the purpose of this, cause of kidnapping, we should not limit ourselves to legal definition. Otherwise, the purpose, the, the cause of, of uh, the what we want this thing to occur will never uh, arise. For instance, if I'm a parent, I'm the one, I'm the one evil uh, sponsoring people to go and to go and stay. And I know that they go to stay. And, uh, and when they get there, they will, they will catch those people that are on the feet. But myself, who, who is the bearer? They say because it's not really because the Lord did not even uh, uh, extend to us. Then this stealing will continue. We should put it in such a way that knowingly is an offense too, in this way. But if we, if we don't put that one, there is no way this, this law will cure the effect of kidnapping. Uh, because in most cases, when we take this thing to court, the court will, uh, will discharge the acquittal to say, look, it is not there. If you are knowingly of the offense for kidnapping is an offense, it will cop what you want to, to, to do. So there is no legal uh, this thing that is hundred percent. So we knowledge should be should be thank you.
but but deputy deputy we uh, as as i'm not a lawyer but but there's a fundamental point that deputy leader made he is saying that the 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 the, the, the strength of a law is the ability for it to be able to hold when you go to court that there should not be any ambiguity that he said that if you put knowingly there then it, 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 the the judge can decide what is the definition of knowingly. I'm, not that the fact that you know, that, I that's the point you are, you are making so what that's what he's saying what's your own point on that mr chairman if it is so what is the purpose of this uh, what what we want to cure in this plea? And then in other words, we will not have a conviction. No, then the, 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 the no, 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 it all depends. Yes. Okay. Let me let me put the question so we make progress. Yes. The series called in favor of section two as amended. That is to say, whoever intentionally and unlawfully receives. Uh, no, that's not, that's not what the the. the the amendment is replacing intentionally yeah replacing knowingly with intentionally there's just one amendment those in favor of clause two as amended say aye those against say nay the ayes have it clause three Clause three, those in favor that clause three. Y yes. Yes, and Joe Again, here, Mr. Chairman, I, I I want to bring a second perspective to what the words have captured. What the words here capture clearly is that. Sorry, sir. It's on. Okay. I just want to guide us. We must come up, if we have any observation to recommend for an amendment of the clause, we must come up with the arrangement of the clause as opposed to an open debate. Otherwise, we will not make more progress. So, if you have an observation on three, tell me what you are putting forward as an amendment so that we can make progress. So, make your quick introduction and tell me what the amendment is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What I'm bringing, the perspective here I'm bringing, it clearly indicates that whoever negotiates or assists in any negotiation to obtain for the abductor any ransom, at the end it's indicating it's liable to committing an offense. Mr. Chairman, the practical aspect that is now working practically, practically, Mr. Chairman, is that people rather use other medium to negotiate for the release of their loved ones outside the involvement of the police. It may be wrong, but for fear, that is what is preponderantly today happening in our own communities. And I believe this clause is too big, it's too large, it's too general, and it can involve such involvement of people even in goodwill who risk themselves to negotiate with these people of the underworld for the release of their loved ones whenever they send a ransom demand. So I may not have, Mr. Chairman, a ready a close to replace for uh, yes sir contributions on that Ch Ch chairman um senator tazi you heard his observation Ch let, let the those that prepare to tell us then we'll take contributions do you have something to tell us before I yeah mr chairman what we are saying here we are talking about for the abductor we are not just talking for anybody who is uh, helping to get uh, his loved one. We are talking for the abductor, negotiate for the abductor. That who is the kidnapper who is trying to collect money. That's the person we are talking about. We are not just talking about any person. You know, that's what we are saying. So understand this. We are talking for whoever intentionally 
negotiate, assist in any negotiation to obtain for the abductor. And that's why we made emphasis there. You know, any ransom for the release of the person, we are not just saying if you are helping, you are, look, you are doing this for somebody. And that is the, the kidnapper. Thank you. That is fine. Okay, Senator Ledani, maybe you can add. Thank you, Mr. I think uh, we, we, we need to look closely at this uh, clause. Uh, when we amended the original bill to read for the adoption, we thought that what we are doing is to protect uh, those, who, those who may be uh, involved innocently in order to secure the release of the, the victim. But here, if you read it like, uh, as it is written, to obtain for the adopter, that is to obtain ransom for the adopter. It, it, it doesn't help unless we say who negotiates, assist or negotiate, assist in any negotiation on behalf of the adopter. That means it is only somebody who is working on behalf of the adopter. Then that becomes punishable. But if you are working or you are negotiating on behalf of the victim, then you should not be placed for the life because, yes, but if you say for that, you are talking about ransom for the adopter. It's ransom for the adopter. But if you say on behalf of the adopter, it means you are working for the adopter, not for the victim. So you replace it with on behalf of the adopter. But for the adopter, you are talking about the ransom itself for the adopter. So it's better we use a more clear language on, to obtain on behalf of the adopter or for, or for and on behalf of the adopter. Yeah, my actually, Mr. Chairman, my decision colleague, I think we must, like he suggested, take a second look at it so that we don't take innocent people to prison. Uh, because of the uh, true experience, normally the Kidnappers call the victim families and they start negotiation from there. The victim families out of apprehension and fear that they may kill the victim will start negotiation even before reporting to security agencies. And the negotiation is with the view to giving money to the kidnapper. This, as the law is stated here, that person is not provided or is not protected. And so I would think that we, we may have to have a proviso that provided that uh, that uh, such a negotiator is not a member of the family uh, who, who is innocent. I am mean, not, I'm not dra drafting. And again, there is also another aspect to it, that security agencies sometimes engage the kidnappers in a negotiation with a view to giving them money, but also with a view to tracking their, uh, their location. So, uh, so where the, the, the security agent uh, negotiates with, uh, with the abductor with a view to releasing the victim and also with a view to apprehending the kidna uh, kidnappers after tracking their, their presence, then even that uh, security agent will be guilty of negotiating uh, 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 with a view to uh, so we must be drafted so we can protect both the victim families who may be talking to the kidnappers and all the security agencies who are negotiating uh, with a view to giving them money in order to even apprehend them at the end of the day. So uh, it's, it's, it's not uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. I think the essence of this clause, in my understanding, is to punish those who collude with their doctor. So we have to be the proper way to do to with the doctor to get the ransom. But if you leave it as it is, those are supposed to be victims to now be criminals. So we use the proper way. <laughs> Who have, whoever colludes with the doctor to receive a ransom for the need of any person, and then that's the best of the question, correct? Deputy Senate President, 
are you saying that in your own, you are proposing to say whoever colludes intentionally or what, whoever intentionally negotiates or sits in any negotiation? Oh, so just be whoever colludes. Okay, any second to that? Now, what, what the Deputy Senate President is saying for item three, because the argument that our, our colleagues have contributed is that it sounds a bit vo um, vague or bogus in the sense that an innocent person who is negotiating with the uh, adopter can be caught under this section of, let, let, me, let, me, let me finish, please. So now the question is to clear the ambiguity, right? Even though Deputy Dema argued there's no ambiguity, but to clear the ambiguity, he's suggesting that we can redraft that section to prove say whoever colludes with their adopter to receive any ransom. <clears throat> there's no need to negotiate anymore. Whoever, because that's what you are doing, what you are negotiating to receive ransom. So whoever colludes with their adopter, to receive ransom for the release of any person who has been wrongly restrained or wrongfully confined shall be guilty of an offense. Now, the both, both are achieving the same thing, but I think one is clearer to any, any, anybody that. So I need somebody to second that if, if we agree to that. So, yes, Deputy Whip. This, this uh, as it is, is better than the last book we looked. If you collude, which means that if you are giving money to them, you are colluding with them. Whoever negotiates this, this phrase as it is here is better than colluding. If, Deputy Leader. I don't know really. I have tried my best to, to, fall, to fall this provision. And I'm not be able to fall it. This is a law that is what is referred to as necessary indentment. And we are all aware that no criminal jurisdiction has succeeded in punishing the victim of the crime as, 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 as the perpetrator. So when this provision is made, the necessary intendment is to punish anybody who is acting on behalf of the adopter. That's what it is. That's the necessary intendment. Let me ask you a question. Okay, if, if, if it's a case of where a relative of the victim is negotiating, suppose... So wait, wait. Supposedly, we think he's negotiating for the victim, but it happens that he's actually working with the adopter. How does how do you know? Senator Lidani, can the lawyers in here help us out of this uh, <laughs> this job? You are confusing us more. The lawyers in the chambers. Yes, Senator Lidani. Thank you, sir. I think uh, reading this as it is, sir, uh, is subject to any kind of interpretation. Because if you say whoever knowingly negotiates or assists in the negotiation to obtain for the adapter any ransom, the person negotiating could be somebody negotiating on behalf of the victim. And he is trying to obtain ransom not for the victim but for the adapter, in which case he is uh, liable under this section. So long as he obtains uh, or he negotiates or obtains something for the abductor. So the way forward is to marry what uh, he has to say together with, with whoever knowingly colludes, uh, negotiate, whoever knowingly colludes or negotiates or assists in any, or any negotiation for the abductor. So it means the collusion is with the abductor, not with the victim. Yes, so the collision is key here. Yeah. So I, I suggest we include collision for the adopt or on behalf of the adopt. I think what you are trying to say now is that the the is that to say that whoever knowingly colludes or whoever colludes with the adopter to receive any ransom. That's where you are. 
your, your recommendations, whoever colludes with the abductor to receive any ransom for the release of any person. Do we need to put negotiation, negotiate and assist? Huh? Okay, let me put the question and I make progress. Because you lawyers are confusing us. Whoever colludes with the abductor to receive ransom for the release of any person who has been wrongfully restrained or wrongfully confined shall be guilty of an offense and shall be punished on conviction with imprisonment for a term of 30 years without option of fine. Those in favor of clause 3, as amended, say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Wow. Amendment to what? What are you amending? I've not released you there because I. Mr. Chairman, just to avoid that we quit, I'm saying we have to have a, maybe a, a clause 3D. We must have an exception. There must be a provision that, uh, provided that such negotiation was innocently done by the victim's family or security agents with a view to securing the, you know, just something to assist them. The collusion, is, the method that, is such that, the reason I'm saying this is that we have consistently insisted In that, that, the that, the yes, that members of the family should not negotiate with the kidnappers. That once uh, a, kidnapped, uh, uh, a, a kidnapper calls the family, they ought to report to security agents. But in some instances, out of fear, they actually uh, uh, negotiate with them and then even pay the ransom, and then, and then they secure the release of their their family members. So that yeah, means they have, the that means they have colluded. That, no, I'm, I'm saying that it could be interpreted that way. So there should be a proviso to protect them because so long as it is done innocently and with the knowledge of security agencies and all done by security agencies with a view to apprehending the, the uh, eventually the kidnappers, then they should be exempted from uh, from punishment. Later, say aye. Those against say nay. Yeah, is that close four? Those in favor that close four stands deleted as recommended. Say aye. Those against say nay. Yeah, is that the new clause four? New clause four, those in favor that clause four stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have clause five. Yeah, clause four. So, so I think. Mr. Chairman, I, I mean, I would have, uh, I would have wished that we have a proper description of this inspector general. You know, so that it's not in conflict with any, you know, with any uh, description of such office. For the general police, that was that one where what we tend to say here. Oh, it. For the general police. Yep. Sorry. All right. Please take care and take note of that. It's, it's a, Inspector General should mean Inspector General of Police when we get to interpretation. Okay. Any other uh, close five? Five. Those in favor that clause five stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay. Yes, I clause six.
Those of you that plus six stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Plus seven. Those in favor that clause seven stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay, as I read. Clause eight. Those in favor that clause eight stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Clause nine. Clause 9, those of you that clause 9 stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Clause 10. Those in favor that clause 10 stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Clause 11. Those in favor that clause 11 stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Those in favor of the old clause 13 as the repeal stands deleted, say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. The new clause 12, interpretation, we will take note of the Inspector General, mean. And so in that, in that place there will be a line, Inspector General means Inspector General of the Police. Yeah, Mr. Queen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Still under that uh, interpretation, I don't know whether it is uh, out of context to put the interpretation of the word ransom there. It is indicated, would they have indicated what abduction, wrongful restraint, whatever, whatever what it stands for. Hostage for ransom, but ransom itself has not been defined under the interpretation and the second thing to that also is that what of abduction either than for ransom, restriction either than for ransom, these are two things that go hand in hand which I felt maybe has not been addressed in the body of the bill to do with confinement, wrongful abduction and such other related offenses either than for and so. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. In, interpretation. Those uh, yes and uh, um. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, if you are quite sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm very sorry to bring you back to plus three. The necessity to introduce three B as uh, proposed by the minority leader. I was a victim in 2009. I was kidnapped for six days. And it was my wife who negotiated with the kidnappers with the knowledge of the security agency, delivered the ransom, and after doing that, they were captured. So what I'm saying is that, where would my wife come in? Is she guilty of three? So there is, it is important, important to include a private, a proviso. Sorry. She didn't collude with the abductor, so where can she can't be guilty? The, the real, the, the problem with that is that there will be uh, an uphill task to define collusion. Mm -hmm. Yes, in court. Yes, that's why I was saying. <laughs> yeah. Section 12, interpretation. Yeah? Yes, I'm Johnny Daniel. Section 11, sorry to bring up that. It has to do with the prosecution of offenses. It says the prosecution under this act shall not be repeated except by over the consent of 
Mr. President, in terms of uh, the reservation raised by Senator Honkwe, you know, abduction that resulted in de that results in death, that is becomes murder. It shouldn't be considered under this one. We are talking of kidnapping. The person is alive. You pay something, and the person has been retrieved. So, but in terms of uh, that one, taking care. Then ransom. Here, yeah, we want to add ransom to it. Definition of this is that. Uh, Ransom becomes the consideration paid by the uh, 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 victims' relations to secure release. Okay, 11 is accepted. We, won't, we don't need to go to a general to get a once the offense is committed, it can be prosecuted anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Okay, distinguished brother, can I put the question there then? Is this on 11? 11, let me take 11, then we'll go to that. On 11, those in favor that 11 as amended, that is to delete section 11, uh, clause 11. Those that, those that say we should stand to agree that say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have Yes, Senator Lashadra. Whether uh, when a relative uh, participates in negotiation to release this and that, I think what we can do to cure it is just to say, with the knowledge of security agencies, anybody who is, who is uh, negotiating uh, with the knowledge of security agencies will have been cleared of anything like collusion. So I, 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 I accept collusion, it should be there, but we should put the clause with the uh, knowledge of security agencies. Uh, uh, as I, as I times that victims negotiate even without the knowledge of security agents. So if you say that, then once security agents are not aware, it means that they've committed an offense, that can't be. I think we can't, there's no perfection. I think the word collusion is the best out of all the scenarios that we've had this morning. Yeah. Yes, sir. Collusion in law means an agreement to defraud another or to do or obtain something forbidden by law as a defense to divorce. And, well, so the important thing that once you say you're colluding, you're already committing to offense itself. So it's only negative. Sorry, before we go to interpretation, I want to point out something at, at, at uh, clause 7. Yes, sir. The clause 7. Letters, 
intercept their messages and your telephone conversation. Now, every day we hear that our phones are being monitored, that our conversations are being, are being intercepted. And I wonder what happened to Section 37 of the Constitution. Section 37 of the Constitution says the privacy of citizens, their homes, correspondence, telephone conversations, and telegraphic communication is hereby guaranteed and protected. So this is the clear words of the Constitution. And for us to sit here and be making a law that is contrary to the position of our Constitution is unfortunate. And this will be helping the security agencies who keep on intercepting people's telephone and monitoring what they are saying to the clear, the clear, uh, the, uh, um, uh, in clear violation of the provisions of the Constitution. So we have, need to have a look at section 7 to see how far we can save it without uh, uh, um, contradicting the provisions of section 37 of the Constitution. Clause 7 is saying what it has, to, it has to be related to the payment of ransom for the release of person. I think it's constrained to that particular offense or action. Because without that, there is no way, majority of this ransom, without you being able to get the communication, in most cases you cannot, uh, you can't prove. I mean, uh, you know. If you go to, uh, please, let's go back to 12, because um, St. Otazi raised the issue of definition of ransom, saying ransom is constitution paid to secured release. Does it have to be by victims or just by, by, any, by, any, by any person? So do we, if we agree that, can I, can I put the question that that can be? Those in favor that section 12 be amended to include the ransom Ransom means consideration paid to secure release by any person. Those in favor that that's, that's part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Those in favor that the short title stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Those in favor that the explanatory memorandum stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. And those in favor that the long title stands part of the bill on page two say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, I move that the Senate do reward the plenary for the charge of court progress. Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, I rise to second the motion that the Senate do revert to plenary to report progress. I still second. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor that we revert to plenary and report progress say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Distinguished colleagues, the Senate, in the committee of the, will consider the report of the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights, and Legal Matters on Abduction, Wrongful Restraints, and Confinement for Ransom Bill 2017, and approved as follows. Clause 1 to 3 as amended, 4 to 10 as recommended, 11 as deleted, 12 as amended. Short title as recommended, long title as recommended. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Home? Leader of the Senate. Stop. I move that the bill be now read the third time. Mr. President, I second that the bill be read the third time. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor that this bill will now be read the third time say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, the bill for an act to provide for the punishment of adoption, wrongful restraint, and confinement for ransom and other related offenses, and for matters incidental there to 2017, third reading. A bill for an act to introduce measures. A bill for an act to provide for the punishment of abduction and wrongful restraint 
and confinement for ransom and for other related offenses and for matters incidental there to 2017 is already the third time and passed. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, the third order of the day is the presentation and consideration of the report of the Committee on Judicial Human Rights and Legal Matters on the prohibition and protection of persons from lynching, mob action, and extrajudicial executions in 2017. The single senators will report that the report of the committee was led on Wednesday, 20 July 2017. Mr. President, we wish to invite Senator David Umaru, Chairman of the committee, to the motion for the presentation and consideration of the report. Once again, Mr. President, the distinguished colleagues, Senator Chiku Kawatazi will do that on behalf of David Umaru. Senator Tazi. Thank you. I have one. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Senator Chiku Kawatazi. I represent the good people of Enugu North Central District. I rise to move that the, uh, the Senate uh, receives the, report, the, the committee report on a bill on act for the prohibition and protection of persons from lynching, mob action, extrajudicial executions, and other related offenses in Nigeria as submitted by the Senate Committee on Judicial and Human Rights and Legal Matters. I so move. Senator Gubri. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor that the Senate do receive the report on the Committee of Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters on the pro Prohibition and Protection of Persons from Lynching, Mob Action, and Extrajudicial Executions Bill 2017, SB 109. Those in favor say aye. Those who can say nay, the ayes are ready. Senator Tazi. The Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights, and Legal Matters on a Bill for an Act for the Prohibition and Protection of Persons from Lynching, Mob Action, and Extrajudicial Executions and Other Related Offenses in Nigeria. Background The Anti Jungle Justice and Other Related Offenses Bill 2016 was sponsored by Senator Dino Melaye, Kogi West Central District. The bill was read for the first time on 11th August 2015. At the plenary sitting of a Wednesday, 5th October 2016, the Senate deliberated on the general principles of the bill. After extensive deliberations on the merits of the bill by the distinguished senators, it was read for the second time and referred to the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters for further legislative action and, the reports, and, uh, and to report back with recommendations. Uh, uh, 3, three zero. objectives of the bill. The objectives of the bill are as follows. First, it seeks to discourage the use of jungle justice or extrajudicial process to handle criminal matters in order to ensure that perpetrators of crimes are punished in accordance with the law. Secondly, it seeks to criminalize as a felony any act or omission that will deprive any person of his life through lynching by a crowd mob action or rioters assemblage, and thirdly, it criminalizes any act or mission of security agent, uh, agents who fails to prevent or protect any citizen or non-citizen from lynching or mob action or extrajudicial killing. The consent, uh, I move uh, for time. I move to observations. Findings. 7.0 observation and our findings. Flowing from the submissions, so presentations made by the stakeholders and the, general, uh, and the general public on this proposed legislation, and having analyzed same, we have made the following observations through so findings. One, that the preponderance of views expressed by stakeholders and members of the public at the public hearing supported the passage of this bill. Two, 
that the passage of this bill into law will not amount to unnecessary duplication, as argued by a cross section of stakeholders. Rather, it will strengthen and reinforce some provisions of our penal and criminal codes, which have no specific provision to address issues of jungle justice and extrajudicial killing in Nigeria. Three, that even though Section 33 of the Constitution of the Federal Group of Nigeria, 1999, has amended, this with right to life, which is seen as an indelible, fundamental right, it is not comprehensive enough. This bill, is, uh, however, seeks to amplify this provision by spelling out specific penalties for offenses arising from mob action, lynching, or lawful assemblage and extrajudicial killing. Four, that the aspect of the bill that criminalizes acts of acts of omission or negligence by security agents who fail to protect victims of lynching, mob action, and extrajudicial killing is a commendable and novel provision that will make the security agencies in the country to be alive to their responsibilities of protecting lives and properties of citizens in line with their core mandates. And finally, number five, the passage of this bill will no doubt be seen as a bold legislative action taken by the Senate that has this public trend of menace, which is on the rise in recent time. Recommendations. Right from the presentations of stakeholders of and the public observations of private, the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, to which the BF has asked for the prohibition and protection of persons from lynching, mob action, and extrajudicial executions, and other related offenses in Nigeria, was referred to, having probably constant same recommends as follows that the Senate will consider past this bill for that for the prohibition and protection of persons from lynching, mob action, and extrajudicial executions, and other related offenses in Nigeria, 2017, as amended. I so move. Uh, conclusion. Finally, we wish to use this opportunity to thank the President of the Senate and our distinguished colleagues for the opportunity to serve in this capacity and to respectfully commend the President of this bill to the Senate. Thank you so much. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, I move that this next bill uh, resolve into the Committee of the Board to consider the report. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I would like to second that we resolve into the Committee of the Board for a class by class consultation of the report. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor that we resolve to come to the whole. Consider this support close by close. Say aye. Those who can say nay, the ayes have it. Distinguished colleagues, we have 20 clauses here. We'll start with clause 1 on page 3. On page 3, we have clauses 1 and 2 and 3. Dr. Leader. Clause 2, we just said uh, in the last paragraph where it says. Within the Federal Republic of Nigeria, without authority of law, it should be without lawful authority. It should be without lawful authority. Anybody seconding that? Yes, yeah, Senator Mukwe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I rise to second the correction as every by the deputy leader. Those in favor of clause one and clause two as amended stands part of the bill say aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Clause three. Those in favor of clause three stands part of the bill say aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Clause four and clause five. Yes, clause five. Deputy leader. 
Number five says, any person or persons who is or are identified as the primary agitator for lynching or lawful killing by mob action, righteous assembly, or by judicial killing, which is not in the dead of a person, is said to have committed an offense. Is said to have committed an offense. Anybody explaining something? Send it to Baron Shibrin. Baron Shibrin can do it. It's time to support the amendment as proposed by the system. Those in favor that clause 4 and clause 5 as amended, stands part of this AI. Was it against any? Yeah, it's a good clause 6. Clause 6 and uh, it says uh, that any person or persons found guilty by a court, but any person or persons found guilty by a court of competent judicial as a primary agitator in the lawful king of the person is 6. Just about the primary uh, agitator. If you see two, you read that there's party or parties who participate. And there's a prescription, there's a prescription punishment for them. So it's not just about the primary agitator. And that is where there is no loss of life. The clause covers it. You read the same clause for 6 1. It says either as a party or parties. So I think it's taking care of that. Yeah, no, clause six. Those in favor, clause six stands part of the say aye. Those against say nay. Yes, I Clause seven. Let's send to Barrage, bro. Yes, I appreciate the position of my colleagues, sir. But if you see what's written there, it's not less than five hundred thousand. Meaning that it can be uh, even more than one million. So I think that is the approach. Okay, any second that to the amendment, not less than one million. Yes, sir. 
Central. I second that it should be not less than one million. Who's in field that plus um, six? Plus seven, sorry, as amended, that is to put the fine at not less than one million. Those in favor of that amendment say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. So close seven one as amended in all section seven one two and three. Seven one two. Yeah. Close eight and nine. Yeah. So secretary, I take note of that here. Close eight and nine. Those in favor that 8 and 9 stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Plus 10 and 11. Center, good. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Close 8. It appears if we read through from the beginning to the end, indicating the liability of both states where uh, such a person or victim is picked and where the state at which he is taken, where he is killed, both became liable. I, I, Mr. Chairman, I'm not too comfortable about that. I, it does not appear to me because where the victim is picked and where he is taken to could be something transitional. It could be something that the state where he is taken has no knowledge of, particularly at the end of the day. It appears to me a little too vague. The serious colleagues have advised that at this level, when we are considering reports, we must come up with recommendations. Either you're asking you to be deleted or amended or something or other. I can only put a question. So I, I have to move to the next uh, clause 10 and 11. Yeah, clause 10. Sir, you know, where was, since we amended that 500 to 1 million in the case of where there is no loss of life, the the compensation of one of not less than one million here, I suggest you also go higher. So I want to suggest three million, two or three million. I don't know what. Okay, Mr. Conda. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. My name is Sam Ayao. I rise to second the amendment that was moved by uh, Senator Dino. Put the question. Those in favor of clause 10 as amended of where the, the fine compensation is not less than 2 million. Those in favor of that amendment say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. What about 10 2? Is there any amendment to that? 10 1, 10 2. Well, that is okay. Those in favor of that 10 2 stands part of you say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Clause 11. Those in favor of that clause 11 stands part of you say aye. Those against say nay, the eyes have it. Plus 12. Yes, 12 is definitely. Yeah. They shall have the decision to try any security officer, not officers. Clark, take note. And now, clause 12. If not, those in favor that clause 12 stands part of the CI. Those against the nay, as I mean. Clause 13 and 14. Clause 15. Yes, the pleader. So, a hospital has not been defined in the, the initial site, and uh, 
15.3, sorry, 15.4, is saying any hospital. So I think it should be any medical facility because if you say hospital, it means the place that refuses or neglects to do what is supposed to do must be a hospital. So it can be, it should be any medical facility. Any medical facility. What is it? Which, which one, which approach do you want to take? Any health facility, yes? Facility will cover what you like to Yeah? <laughs> now let's, let's, let's take this and then we'll go back to the other. You, 15 or 15? 15, yeah, Senator Baram. Mr. Chairman, I'm Baram to bring it up. Uh, I'm not comfortable with uh, the position here that uh, the police report should be, you know, uh, the hospital said, you know, this report will be. This uh, I want to know that the police should be informed immediately, immediately, not before the discharge. But because before the discharge, when he begins to become old, he can run away. The people that he is doing, he can, he can, he can disappear. But if the report is made available before, immediately, the police inform him. You will think, but inform the police immediately, but not allowing. Get the you know, discharge before you inform the police because if it's a criminal, you can appear at any time. So the police will be informed immediately at some moment. It's not a discharge. 15, 15, sir. You have to charge a law for any hospital for medical personnel to reject or refuse medical treatment to any person or person suffering from public abuse on account of failure to do the police report, provided that the report of any such treatment. Be made by the hospital to the police before discharge. It should be immediately and so much. Immediately, treatment is started, the police should be informed. Or you want you want to run away when it begins? Like it's going to be I think it's okay as it is. It's still, it's still before discharge. Provided that a report of such treatment shall be made to the police immediately. Yes? Any second to that? Yes, Sancho Gubri. To the police immediately. Okay. Distinguished Court, those in favor of clause 5 1 as amended stands part of the CI. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. Those in favor of clause 15 2, 15 3. You have an amendment. Okay, which one? Close 13, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. 13, close 2. It says any security officer who denies access to immediate medical treatment to be given to a person or person suffering from bullet wounds or any wounds sustained during arrests in his or her custody shall be guilty of an offense and shall upon conviction be sentenced to imprisonment for seven years. Two issues here. The same call is uh, those in favor that 15.2 and 15.3 and 15.4 as amended, that is changing any hospital health facility, stands part of the bill. Say aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Now, let's go back to 13. Yes. 
So as I was saying, Mr. Chairman, two issues here and those two. One, the word immediate medical attention. One thing comes to their uh, 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 stance here. We are talking about arrests. That is what is clearly indicated. Arrests as a result of an alleged offense by the security agencies. The victim sustains uh, uh, an injury or bullet wound. And then they indicate that he, he shouldn't deny immediate. In my own opinion, we should remove the word immediate. Yes. Excuse me. There are two issues. That's what I'm saying. Because for you to say you are taking somebody into custody and you are releasing him for immediate, that is one thing. Number two, the second issue I'm raising is on what has been indicated as an offense and life for imprisonment for seven years. I think it's too great, uh, Mr. Chairman, because we are now referring to a situation, and that is my opinion, and I'm saying it because uh, that the, 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 there is fully, Mr. Chairman, a very thin line between what is right and what is wrong. Yes, the security agent could do it as has been indicated here, but security agents could also find themselves after receiving any mistakenly here, and I think it is too great for us to generalize that and push the security agent to now back seven years for probably committing what is not deliberately an offense. This is what I'm talking about, and I feel we should strongly look at this thing without uh, really uh, taking it that we are doing it in the sense that we are already alleging or thinking that security agents do all the time come at fault. In a lot of cases, they may not be at fault. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Senator Okui, I, I keep on repeating the same thing. There are two proposals you brought forward. First of all, the issue of immediate, one recommendation. If it's not seven years, you don't recommend anything. You just made a debate. So if you are going to put your recommendation, you want to come down to one year, two years? Chairman, I am proposing one year. That is what I'm proposing. Um, we're now at um, 12.15. Clause 16. Clause 16 and 17. Those in favor that clause 16 and 17 stands part of the bill say aye. Those against it, aye. Clause 18. Which clause are you on? There is no constitutional provision that requires an attorney general of a state to require the consent of uh, the attorney general of the federation. He is the chief law officer of that state, sir. He doesn't need the consent of the attorney general of the federation. So what are you recommending? I'm the entire 16. The entire 16. Is any second Senator Tazi, you crafted it. Do you want us to delete 16? The second for that question of those in favor of the list, clause 16, say aye. Those against say nay. 16A or 16B? 16A. Okay, those in favor of the 16A be deleted, say aye. Those against say nay. That's a 16B. Okay, what about 16? It's the same thing then? Yes, sir. 
so you are back to your same amendment that the entire 16 should be deleted. Deleted, yes, sir. Those in favor of the, the 16 should be deleted. Say aye. Those against, say nay. Yes, I have it. Clause 17. Yes, plus yes. just, just like we did, because of the interpretation of the word hospital, we will just talk about the health facilities there too. And come, just to agree with what we did earlier. We are, we are permitted to speak only English in the chapter. I think that was 18. Was 18. Clause 18, close the that clause 18, the clause 18, please, can you check out? Concern with attention, yes? So can I definitely that you want to move for that amendment? Huh? All right, so it will just read that where a private privacy case has been established under section 10 of this act, the attorney of the state shall commence criminal action against the security officer, medical facility, or medical personnel. Those in favor, as amended, say aye. Those against, say nay. The ayes have it. Clause 19. Those in favor that clause 19 stands part of the say aye. Those against, say nay. The ayes have it. Those in favor of the short title stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Those in favor that the explanation memorandum stands part of the bill. Do I can't see the explanation memorandum. Where is that? Where is the explanation memorandum? Sir? Explanation memorandum. Okay, leave that. Those in favor that long title stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. We have the Senate. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, I move that the Senate request to go to work plenary for the charge to report progress. Mr. Chairman, I second that we report to plenary for the report progress. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor that I report to plenary and report progress say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Distinguished colleagues, yeah, the Senate and the Committee of the Whole considered the report on the Committee on Judicial Human Rights and Legal Matters. On the Act for Prohibition and Protection of Persons from Lynching, Mob Action, and Extrajudicial Execution, and Other Related Offenses in Nigeria, and approve as follows Clause 1 as recommended, 2 as amended, 3 to 4 as recommended, 5 as amended, 6 as recommended, 7 as amended, 8 to 9 as recommended, 10 as amended, 11 to 14 as amended, 15 as amended, 16 deleted. 17 as recommended, 18 as amended, 19 as recommended, short title as recommended, long title as recommended. This is a true reflection of what transpired in Congo. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, very good to see colleagues. I hope that we step down the remaining items. Oh. <laughs> Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, I hope that the bill will now read the third time. Mr. President, the 
So it was Moshe or Taimu in? At the Jew, at that time. Oh, okay. I lost the second at the Jew, at the first time. That's the second. The second time is the second at the Jew, at the first time. Mr. President, Mr. Wick Senators, the bill for an act for the prohibition and protection of persons from leeching or unlawful killings by mob action or riotous assemblage or extrajudicial killings in Nigeria and for other related offenses 2017. The bill for an act for the prohibition and protection of persons from lynching or lawful killings by mob action or righteous assembly of extrajudicial killings in Nigeria and for other related offenses 2017 is very detected and passed. Please have the Senate. Mr. President, very colleagues. I move that we step down the many uh, items on the order of the party and other legislative. I second that we step on the attempt on the legislative assault. Mr. Mr. Colleagues, in favor of the motion, I stand out the attempt on the other paper on the legislative PCI. Okay. The case has been named. The eyes are in the Senate. Mr. President, I will conclude to that proceeding of the other paper. I hereby move that the Senate do that on the 3rd October. Uh, 2017 at 10 and 4. Mr. President, I have a motion that the Senate will adjourn Tuesday, 5 October, 10 a.m. as a second. Mr. Senator, right before that, um, I put the question, I just quick announcement. Membership of the Committee on Local Content will collect and announce the Chairman and Vice Chairman. They just want to announce members. Members are sent to Alasha Dura. Senator Ali Wakil, Senator Arafat, Senator Ali Usabi, Senator Joseph Ogba, Senator Andrew Chindu, Senator Ben Tamasi, Senator Biodo Lujimi, and Senator Babaka Kagaraba. Those in favor of the motion that the Senate is here by John Tuesday, 3rd October 2017 at 10 a.m. say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes are open. The Senate is accordingly adjourned to Tuesday, 3rd October 2017 at 10 a.m.